right, good morning again. I'm trying to figure out what to do with all this sheep shrapnel we've got up here, but that's all right. That's all right. Um, I, I do have a secret. Um, I told Tyler that you all were here to see him, so just go with it, okay? He has no idea, no idea at all. Yep. Yeah, so just go with that. Say, I'm here to support you, Tyler. Uh, Tyler is our, if you don't know him already, is our student minister. Um, he does great work with our youth, and and with today being oriented with the kids leading worship, I think he was kind of joking. He said, hey, I can preach. I said, you got it, buddy. <laughs> and so here he is. I, I am excited. He's done dozens, if not hundreds, of lessons with kids and youth, but this is his first official sermon, and yeah. I, I told him, I said, look, my first sermon was horrible. You're going to do a whole lot better than I did, so, you know, the, the bar is low, I promise <laughs> you. Don't, don't you worry. But he did say this morning, he said, well, the good thing is, AJ, after I'm done, everybody's going to say, well, AJ's all right. AJ. <laughs> I said, no, that's not the case at all. But Tyler, I am thankful yeah. for you. Yeah, yeah, little, take, I don't know what that is, but yeah. that works. <laughs> <laughs> and excited to hear what God's laid on your heart this morning. Yeah. So thank you so much. Yeah. yeah, I'm excited. Well, good morning. Good morning. I always like to, just like my youth, I like to start everything off with prayer. If y'all will bow your heads. God, we thank you so much for this time that, that we get to come together. We get to worship God. We, we get to go through your word. God, I pray that this Christmas story, as simplistic as it is, God, that we can really see the, the love and the obedience that comes through this story. God, I pray that you would speak through me and that you would um, allow others to um, take the word in. We love you and we thank you. It's in your most wonderful and precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. So, like I said, or like AJ said, uh, I'm, the, I'm the youth pastor here at Access Point. Um, used to speaking to a little bit shorter audience. So, uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm really excited. So, as we listen to the Christmas story each year, we can do one of two things. We can listen to it, and we can take nothing from it, and we can go up on about our year with our New Year's resolutions, and, and nothing changes, and it's just another year. Or we can take it, take the simplicity of the story, find something new in it, and run with it into the year. So I'm, I'm hoping that's what we can do this morning. Um, I know I've definitely um, just been studying it in a deeper way. Uh, I've, I've found some things that I can take from this. So as we get closer and closer to Christmas Day, I'd like us to really think about the Christmas story from a different viewpoint. Today I'm going to be talking from uh, Matthew chapter 1. So if, if you have your Bibles and you want to, and you want to follow along with me. Um, the Bible doesn't tell us much about who we're going to be talking about today. Today I'm going to be talking about Joseph. Uh, a lot of times we, we look at the viewpoint of Mary when we're looking at the book of Luke. Um, it it, it kind of gives us a little more detail into, into what happened, but I really enjoy Matthew because it, it gives us a viewpoint of, of Joseph, and I think that's, that's one that we don't tend to look at that much. So let's read Matthew 1, 18 through 21. Nope. There it goes. All right, so the birth of Jesus Christ came about this way. After his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, it was discovered before they came together that she was pregnant from the Holy Spirit. So her husband Joseph, being a righteous man and not wanting to disgrace her publicly, decided to divorce her secretly. But after he had considered these things, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, don't be afraid to take Mary as your wife, because... What has been conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to name him Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. Joseph is a huge part of this amazing Christmas story, and I think we overlook that a lot. As we go forward, I hope you will see that Joseph has to align his life with God's plan. 
Matthew doesn't give the kind of deep detail that Luke does, like I said before, but he does give a better glimpse at Joseph's decisions and his heart. We learn, we learn at the beginning of Matthew that Joseph and Mary are betrothed. That might be a little bit of, of a foreign concept to us because now we, we go on dates to dating, to being engaged, and to being married. For them, betrothal was a process that was used to test the fidelity of a person, to test their commitment to that relationship. It was, a, it was very similar to what we call engagement today. It was as legally binding as marriage is. We learn in verse 18 of the first chapter that Mary is found or discovered to be pregnant. This would have been highly suspicious to Joseph because during the betrothal process, the couple would have had little to no contact in that time. The fact that Mary was pregnant would draw a lot of red flags. This would have shamed Mary to no end. And inevitably, everyone had to be thinking that Mary had cheated on Joseph with another man. I think it's probably safe to say that Joseph was feeling betrayed and was hurting. In verse 19, we get a glimpse of the truly remarkable character of who Joseph really is. Joseph is said to have been a just man. According to the law, adultery was punishable by death. And we see this in Deuteronomy 22, 23 through 24. Since Joseph does not have any details about Mary's pregnancy... He likely assumes that she has been unfaithful. But Joseph decided not to make a spectacle of Mary. And I think this is is where we get into the most interesting part. Joseph decides not to shame her. Contrary to Jewish law, which says we need to kill her because she she has committed adultery and she has been with another man. I think this shows Joseph's obedience to God, and we'll see, and we'll see his obedience to God here com- coming soon. He decided not to make a spectacle of her and, and publicly shame her, so he made the decision to divorce her in quiet. In this, we see Joseph's character, despite what appears to be infidelity on Mary's part. He doesn't want to shame her. As Joseph considers all these options, his decision to act is divinely intercepted and changed. How many of us in this situation would jump the gun and shame the other person? I can, I can say for a fact that most people would, would react in anger, would react off the cuff, not think about anything. And when we react based off of emotions, we block out what God has to say to us. We block out everything that God can can talk to us in that moment to calm us down, to make us think rationally, to help us see and help us understand what, how we need to react in that moment based off the word that we know. As God's people, we are called to live in this way that puts his character on display. We are, we are to walk uprightly and justly just as we see Joseph In this passage, true righteousness is characterized by the compassion and mercy someone is willing to give, even when it is not given to them, or even when it's easier to do the opposite. Joseph embodies this righteousness so well. And as we continue, still running the clicker here. (laughs) Um, So, In Matthew 23 uh, and 24. Now all this took place to fulfill what was spoken by the Lord through the prophet. See, the virgin will become pregnant and give birth to a son, and they will name him Emmanuel, which is translated to God is with us. When Joseph woke up, he did as the Lord, as the Lord's angel had commanded him, and he married her. The angel of the Lord tells Joseph, several key factors that are important to the story. First, Gabriel clarifies how many, um, how Mary has conceived. Then he confirms that this miraculous conception is of the Holy Spirit. And we see this, this is in uh, Luke 1, 
35. This is, this is where we're getting this. We're, we're kind of mirroring off, mirroring off of that. So secondly, Gabriel affirms the mission of the baby that is to be born. Joseph is instructed to name the boy Jesus. Gabriel says that this child will save his people from their sin. And third, the final factor that is significant is the passage tells us everything Jesus does in the coming uh, to come into this world fulfills what the prophet King Ahaz has said in Isaiah 7, 14, and this is the prophecy. So, therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. See, the virgin will conceive, have a son, and name him Emmanuel. After the angel speaks to Joseph in his dream, he is immediately resolved. Joseph immediately took Mary as his wife. This action would have been frowned upon in Joseph's world, as, as would be most likely in our world today. But Joseph didn't care because he was obeying the command of God. How many of us know what God wants us to do? And instead of doing what God wants us to do, we choose to disobey. We choose to be rebellious. We see the word right in front of us. We see, we see you shall not do this, you shall not do this, and you shall not do this. And we know this. We know this. But time and time again, we choose to disobey God. We, look, we choose to look God right in the face and disobey him. <clears throat> we constantly trick ourselves into thinking that we know better than God, which we all know that's, that's wrong. We tell ourselves, I can handle it by myself, when, in, when all that inevitably fails, we wonder why. In this moment for Joseph, he immediately went to take Mary as his wife because it's what God had instructed him to do. Joseph, being the God-fearing, obedient man he was, did not waver at all. Joseph listened and followed God, even though this was a daunting task. There have been fathers in the past who have, who have abandoned their families for much less than what Joseph has faced right here. He's just been told he is going to be the earthly father of, of the Son of God. If there's nothing more daunting than that, I, I want you to tell me, because that is, that's, that's crazy. I mean, <laughs> yeah. It, so he then, let me find my place here. He saw that challenge and he took it head on. He took the whispers of people who would ine inevitably question the fidelity of his wife and the legitimacy of his son. He obeyed God, even though in that moment it would have been so much easier for him to just walk away. A lot of us desire to live in God's will for our lives. We often pray and not so, so patiently wait for God to announce his plan to us. Joseph's life is one of true obedience. Through Joseph's obedience, God chose his plan for Joseph's life. Joseph's desire was to immediately do what God had commanded. We don't need to look and wait for, for God to will to show up. Every day we are to walk in obedience to the Lord as we do. And as we do this, he reveals his plan to us. God's plan could come in some pretty radical ways, some ways that we're not ready for. So when we make that call, when we, when we tell God, God, I'm ready. God, I'm ready to listen. I'm, I'm, I'm ready to take on what you have planned for me. There could be some pretty radical answers coming from God. We have to be ready for that. Just like Joseph, we must learn, we must learn to align our path with God's path as he calls us to take that scary first step of obedience. When we do that, we can truly understand what it means to obey God and stand firm in God's will in our lives. You will then be able to see firsthand what God can and will do through your life. This Christmas, I really want us to take a step back. I want us to take a step back from the stress and the worry that, that Christmas brings. It, it kind of contradicts the 
the O oh Holy Nights and the <laughs> and the Silent Nights. It's it's a bunch of getting the kids from party to party, getting getting them uh, getting them to grandparents' houses on Christmas, and we kind of lose sight of of where we're at. We kind of lose sight of why we're doing this, because like it's always said, it's not about the presents. It's not it's it's not even just about family. It's about that baby who came, humbled himself down into that form to save us all from our sins. From a wooden manger to a from a wooden manger to a wooden cross. Let's pray. God, I thank you so much for this opportunity. God, I thank you for your word that it leads us it guides us through every day, God, that we don't have to do this alone. God, I pray for obedience. God, I pray that, that we choose not to rebel. We choose to, to follow your path for our lives, God. God, I pray that as, as Christmas approaches, we take this, we take this time and we give it to you, God. We take this time with our families and we love on our families. God, I pray that you would give us the answers. We would listen. We love you and we thank you. It's in your most wonderful and precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. And if you need prayer, uh, AJ's going to be at this door and one of our elders are going to be at that door. stand and sing together.
Thank you guys for worshiping us. Let's give the kids a round of applause again. You did a great job. Thank you all for worshiping with us this morning. We will see you all Wednesday night.